Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley at sprinkledwithglitter.com. Thanks for joining me today. Today I am sharing a project that has a collaboration of products between Pink Fresh Studio and Waffle Flower Crafts. I'm gonna be sharing this fun shaker. And Waffle Flower Crafts has just released some brand new products. And so I'm kind of mixing and matching those with some products from Pink Fresh Studio to create my project today. Now a couple of these products that are brand new is this brush holder duo. These are silicone brush holders and these are really cool because if you have the original waffle flower media mat, there are little feet that actually sit in the wells of the water media mat to kind of hold these steady. And I think that's a really smart feature. So you can use that for brushes. You could also use it to even hold water on your water media mat. Now next up is the Waffle Flower Stencil Mat, and this is brand new to the Waffle Flower kind of mat collection here. This holds paper up to nine by 12. You can see it's open on two sides, and there are these lips on two sides. You can see it runs across that left side and the top, and that's gonna help you kind of hold your paper and your stencils in place. You can kind of use them to help line everything up. Now this is a look at the Waffle Flower Mini Media Mat, so you can kind of see the size comparison. And I'm also going to bring in the Waffle Flower Water Media Mat here. So this is the large like watercolor design. You can see those wells on the left side are where that brush holder will actually fit into. And this is slightly larger and heavier than the stencil mat that's just been released. You can see these will stain over time, but they wipe clean very easily. And depending on what type of ink you're using is kind of how the staining kind of takes place, but you will notice that mine are stained. But this new stencil mat, as I mentioned before, is open on a couple of sides. So you could actually put paper that's a little larger than nine by 12 in to that corner and kind of have it help you guide your stencil and your paper in place. Now I'm gonna use the Waffle Flower Duo Tone Christmas Tree Stencil here to demonstrate the stencil media mat. These stencil mats and things like this with that kind of corner holder are gonna be your friend when it comes to layering stencils. So Pink Fresh Studio has a bunch of layering stencils out and you wanna kind of line them up in the same place every time. Something like this stencil mat that has a corner where you can nestle your paper and your stencil into that and kind of line them up is very helpful. So I'm gonna start my stenciling here and I have a piece of cardstock that I'm kind of pushing up into that upper left-hand corner and I have my stencil over the top of it and I'm going to use some blending brushes along with the Pink Fresh Studio Olive Ink to blend over this entire stencil. Now, as long as I keep everything kind of butted up into that upper left-hand corner, I know that it's all gonna line up perfectly. And I'm just holding my stencil in place, but if you're more comfortable, you can use a piece of repositionable tape to hold all of this in place. Or I even tested this, my magnets work through this. I do have a magnetic surface beneath the stencil mat that I'm using, and the magnets are strong enough to work through the stencil mat and kind of hold all that in place. Now, as I mentioned before, this is really easy to clean up. I just used a baby wipe to clean up the excess ink that I had tapped off onto the stencil mat. And a slick surface like this is great to work on because you can actually tap off some of that ink and then go back to that area and pick it up and so you're not wasting ink onto a piece of scrap paper. Now I have a smaller blending brush here and I thought I would try to blend it darker at the top and have it lighter at the bottom or vice versa. And I found that wasn't working exactly how I wanted it to. <laughs> and so I just kind of switched gears here. And what I decided to do was kind of just blend a few of these trees kind of in a random pattern with the darker evergreen ink from Pink Fresh Studio. So I'm just kind of picking a few of those around the area of the stencil and just making those darker. Now, once again, I can just clean up my stencil mat here with a baby wipe or a damp cloth. And you can see I have that beautiful stenciled pattern on my cardstock. Now I am going to flip this duo tone tree stencil over to create the rest of my pattern. And before I flip it over, I wanna make sure that my stencil is nice and clean. So I took some rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle and sprayed it on my stencil and wiped it with a microfiber cloth. And then I just flipped the stencil over. 
So this is going to fill in trees kind of between the trees that I've already stenciled. So I'm starting out with the Pink Fresh Studio Ballet Slipper and I'm blending over the entire surface of the stencil. And for my darker color, I am going to use the Pink Fresh Studio Coral Reef to create some darker pink trees. Now I have to tell you that when it comes to Christmas projects, this green and pink color combination is one of my favorites. I absolutely love it. I think that the pink is a nice kind of alternative to a traditional red, but you still really maintain that Christmassy feel. And so I really, I think you're gonna see this color palette a lot for me this season. And so I apologize if you don't love it, <laughs> but I actually do. So once again, I'm just taking the smaller blending brush and the darker pink ink, and I'm just picking some of the trees randomly throughout the pattern to kind of blend with the darker pink ink. Now, once I remove the stencil, you're gonna see my pattern is completed and I have dark and light green trees and dark and light pink trees. And that completes my pattern. And then I am going to just wipe up the surface of my stencil mat and my stencil with a little bit of rubbing alcohol to clean all of that ink off. Now I'm grabbing all the brushes that I use and I'm throwing them back into the brush holder duo. And this is great if you have that original water media mat it will work for stenciling as well. And maybe you just wanna grab those brush holders and kind of add them on as an accessory to that. I think it's a really cool feature that it has those feet that sit inside of the wells of the water media mat. So I'm just using them to kind of store some of the tools and supplies that I'm using today so that I can keep them all gathered up on my work surface. Now I have this scallop rectangle frame set from Pink Fresh Studio, and I'm gonna die cut this about six times from some heavyweight cardstock. And I'm using the smaller of the two scalloped rectangle frames that this die creates. And I'm gonna stack them up to create the walls of my shaker element. Now I also need a piece of acetate. So I have some Essentials by Ellen clear window plastic here that I'm cutting down to size. And I'm getting all of my pieces kind of prepared so that I can assemble all at once. Now I decided I wanted one of those frames to be foiled. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the metal plate that comes with my Gemini foil press and I'm laying it onto the platform of my foil press. I'm putting this on medium heat and I'm setting my timer for 20 seconds. Now when this gets heated up, I am going to take my foil and lay it with the pretty side facing that plate. So the back side of the foil is facing this frame that I want to be foiled and I'm going to lay that on there and what this is going to do is it's going to create heat and pressure to transfer the foil onto the die cut that I'm laying on top. Now in order to protect my plate I'm going to grab a piece of white cardstock and put that behind the die cut that I'm foiling and I have a second piece of cardstock to act as a shim. Once I have that all layered up I'm going to put the plate on top that comes with the foil press I'm gonna set my timer for 20 seconds. When that 20 second timer is done, I'm gonna remove the platform from the base of the foil press, run that through my Gemini Junior, and then when I pull this out, I am going to have a foiled die cut image. Now I decided to foil it in this way because I wanted my foil to match the sentiment that I'm creating from the Pink Fresh Studio Thrill of Hope Hot Foil Sentiment Set. So you can see my perfectly foiled frame here. And then I'm going to use my Gemini foil press again to create a foiled sentiment. So I'm taking the sentiment, it says Season of Wonder, and I'm gonna hold it in place onto this ink blended cardstock here. You can see my ink blending is not perfect on this, but that's okay because I'm gonna be die cutting it and you're not gonna see a ton of the ink blending anyway, but I wanted it to kind of tie in to that ink blended stenciled background that I created. So I have my foil between my hot foil plate and my cardstock. I've laid that onto the platform of my Gemini foil press, placed my plate on top of that, set my timer for 15 seconds, and then I run that through my Gemini Junior, and the heat and pressure together combine to press this foil onto my cardstock. Now I use the coordinating die to die cut that sentiment out, and you can see I have that beautiful ink blended and foiled sentiment ready to go on my card front. I've also trimmed down the stenciled piece that I created earlier using the Duotone Trees stencil from Waffle Flower. 
And now I'm going to start building up the walls of my shaker. Now you could definitely do this with some foam adhesive. Apparently I was feeling very patient today because <laughs> I went ahead and die cut about six of these frames and I'm stacking them up using some liquid adhesive. And I'm using the Barely Arts craft glue. I really like this glue. I'm really surprised because I have very little problems with it clogging and that sort of thing, and it holds really well. So I stacked up about five or six of those plain white die cuts over the top of that stenciled background. And now I'm adding glue to the back of the foiled piece and I'm adding my piece of acetate behind that. And that's going to help hold in all of the shaker glitter that I'm going to put inside. So I'm gonna use these mica flakes from Ranger for part of my shaker element. And I'm also going to use some icicle glitter from Hero Arts to fill my shaker frame. And this is just going to give me a sparkly kind of snowy effect. You could use sequins or confetti, whatever you want for this. And I'm gonna finish this off by adding some liquid glue to the back of this frame that it has the acetate attached to the back. And I'm gonna stack that on top of those six white die cuts that I stacked up. And it's going to seal in all of that glitter and create the shaker element that I can then add onto the front of my card. So I'm just giving this a little shake and kind of testing it out, making sure that I kind of get everything moving around there and making sure that it's all sealed up. And once I'm confident with that, I'm going to go ahead and remove the backer from the foam adhesive that I placed on the back of my foiled and die cut sentiment and attach that to the lower right hand corner of the shaker element kind of at an angle. Now once I have that on there, I'm almost done with my card. I've gone ahead and die cut this pale rose cardstock from Basil. It's one of my favorite soft pink cardstocks. And I die cut it using a stitched rectangle die from Pink Fresh Studio. And now I'm going to use just the platform of my foil press and this Pink Fresh Studio diamond pattern hot foil plate to just press a design into my cardstock. You can see I added an extra shim of cardstock. There is no heat and no foil. I am just using this plate to press that design in almost like you would an embossing folder. And in order to make that sandwich very easily, I just use the platform of my foil press, but you can definitely play with the plates of your die cut machine and use your hot foil plates, especially the backgrounds, to create a textured background for your card. So I attach that to my top folding A2 size card base. And now I have a stamp from the Thrill of Hope stamp set here from Pink Fresh Studio. It says, enjoy the wonder and the gifts of the season. And I stamped that on the inside of my card. And I finished my card off by adding my shaker element to the front of this card. And that finishes off my card for today. It is a lot of fun to create this. And if you will notice, this card is very similar to a card that I created last week featuring some other products from Pink Fresh Studio. The design and the layout are very much the same, even though the cards feel a lot different because one is a shaker card and one features these adorable little trees and the other features a very geometric and abstract type background pattern. So while the layout is very similar, the cards feel very different. So when you're creating, remember, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can use the same layout that you used and make it feel completely different by changing up the products. As always, I will have links to the featured products used in this project in the description at YouTube, or you can head on over to my blog at sprinkledwithglitter.com. I will have that linked below as well. Over there, you'll find more still shots, more information, and a complete list of supplies. And I do hope you will join me over on Instagram because this project is a part of an Instagram hop celebrating Waffle Flower Craft's newest release, which includes the stencil mat and the brush holder duo, along with some other fun products that I think you will find useful in your craft room. So head on over to Instagram. I will have that in the YouTube description below. You'll find prizes and more inspiration featuring these brand new products from Waffle Flower Crafts over there. Thanks as always for watching. I am so glad you're here. I'm so glad you hung out with me today. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications here on my YouTube channel so you don't miss any of my paper crafting and card making video tutorials. And if you liked this video, I would love it if you would share it with a friend. 
Thanks again for watching, and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.